Uh, thank you, Margaret. I feel uh, humbled and honored to be in this company. And uh, I've been making notes about different views and different thoughts, uh, which has enriched us all. Uh, as somebody said, uh, it seems the message is so much in common and so much the same coming up from all of us because actually we are connected now after this crisis and therefore we're not wearing our hats and we're not wearing our robes anymore we actually uh, are connected almost in crisis we are connected to everyone and each other um i always been i am the in charge of interfaith work in the whole of jewish community but you know there is no place for interfaith in this crisis we are one faith even those without faith have now joined this global belief that the sanctity of the human being we've all every one of us here discovered or knew but the whole world now know that in birth in health and in death we are exactly the same there's absolutely no difference and that the dress that we dress during lifetime is quite honestly it was a waking hour for us to say you know this is just a dress this is just a robe and this is just a hat and it is there to pass a message and to explain it but it is not the real thing and it's not the core so that's the biggest lesson that I personally have learned from this uh, crisis. Um, it's as a communal led leaders, all of us, have, we have responsibility. We have responsibility to our faith, people of my, our faith. We have, we have responsibility to the interfaith. We have responsibility globally as, as, as world leaders as well. But we are also individuals. And I can only talk about me as an individual. Uh, I cannot talk about you. Uh, the world can learn a lesson, we can lead, we can guide, but literally the only pe person that we can change is ourselves. Mm -hmm. And the only lesson that is individually coming to me is to me and not to you. So I want to tell you that, I mean, as, as Margaret has introduced me, I'm a man of deep individual faith. I, I, my duty, I feel my duty and my mission is to walk in the shadow of God. We have a, a Hebrew expression, Betzelem Elohim. It's, it is the, in the shadow of God we walk. We try and emulate his kindness and his blessings. And that's how I feel. I feel that every single moment, God is the stream force, that there is nobody else, but he's also a living God. Is a God that talks to each one of us individually and guide us individually if we only let him into our heart. If we only set our antenna to hear his voice, he's talking to us, each one, individually. I feel that every moment that he blesses me with, and I hope you feel the same, is a gift, is an opportunity, every living moment. And it doesn't matter whether that moment is a challenge, hard challenge, or, or a, a winning a, a, a lottery or seeing your own son or your baby all these moments are opportunities for us to grow they are wrapped up sometimes with challenges sometimes with sadness sometimes with happiness but each one of us face that opportunity open that gift unwrap it unwrap it and says right how do i deal with that moment now and on that I grow or I, I, or I fail. And in a way, this crisis is coming to the whole world in the same way, both individually and globally. And you know what? I will say it as a, in, in the summary. I will say, I pray and I hope that we will come out of this a kinder society, a stronger society, a society that cares for each other, but in the back of my mind, uh, my leaders, in the back of my mind, I think it is a, a neutral moment. That actually, the world can ignore it. It has ignored in the past lessons, similar lessons. It has gone back to what it was. In, whenever we had the 2008 crisis, people were 
homeless, and people said we're going to be a more caring society. But a few years later, we forgot. A few years later, we came back to exactly the same. Why is this place, why does this sound to me a little bit different? Because I developed my, my faith and I developed my values from a gift. God gave me a gift. In my early 20s, he blessed me with a year, a whole year, where I disposed from all my material belongings, completely, totally. I went just with the shirt and suit that I had. And I went to Jerusalem and I spent a whole year without thinking about assets and cars and, 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 and belongings and, and leadership and titles and no, nothing, just nothing. And in that year, and in that year, I asked, I had the chance to ask the core questions. Where am I going? What am I doing? Where, where do I get my message? And in God's mercy, he gave that whole gap year. Probably once we say a hundred years, I say 500 years. Never have I seen a moment where God says to the whole world, stop completely. This cannot be. People said, don't blame God about this. You know what? It cannot be. The, the, the only a supreme person and the supreme force in the world can create such a moment. Can you think, even three months ago, two months ago, that there is something that will grant every single plane in the world, every single airport, everyone, the Chinese and the Americans and the, the Israelis and the Palestinians, everybody, that we all sit at home, that we all can, how can that be? I, the Supreme, I'm the American president. I can, I have Air Force One and two and seven and 12. I, uh, I, I, I own the universe. I own all the money in the world. No, no, no. All of you are now children of God. All of you sit at home. All of you have no money because I've taken all that. I've taken it just to, just for you to, to breathe, to learn how to breathe. And so what I'm saying to you, the same way as he blessed me with that gap here, he gave me to ask these questions of call. He has done that to the whole world. Once in a 500 years, one in a thousand years, he's telling the world, stop, stop being busy. Stop running around, stop flying. Sit and ask your questions. How are you treating yourself? How are you treating your wife? How are you treating your children? How are you treating your neighbor? How are you emulating the kindness and blessings of God? That is the question. Now, it's up to us. It's up to us. Are we tuned to that? Are we up to that test? Are we up to that challenge? Are we taking him on? Are we saying, yes, I am going to be a better person. I am going to ask the right question. I will not think I am the most supreme and the greatest person. And so I presented to you one of the projects that I'm dealing with and I'm opening it, launch globally tonight is called Act of Kindness. It's run by the Unity of Faith, which I'm a trustee. Every act of kindness anywhere in the world will be recorded. And that is our antidote to Corona. Every act in the entire world will be counted the same way as we say, three million people have got Corona. We're gonna say three million acts of kindness have counted the world and six million. And we're gonna beat that and we're gonna to rise to the challenge. And I pray that we all do so. And I pray that the world will come to a better position and a better place. And thank you very much. Thank you.